Hey, this is Matt. Once again, we're about to another review. The other paid request this time from Galermo. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos or topics or whatever it may be, uh, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is for a film called Howard's Mill from 2021 this year. And I will admit, I liked it. So this would definitely be... It's not a big list, but uh, I've barely made a top 10 list uh, of uh, 2021 films. And this would be maybe like number 10. You know, uh, but it's not something I love and going, gosh, 5 out of 5 stars. But I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. Where... How do I do it? Well, listen. It's presented like a real documentary. I think there are people that will get fooled into thinking this is a real documentary. And I think it did a rather good job making it believable in that format. And I'm a sucker for that kind of film. Whether it be The Tunnel, which is my favorite of that. Uh, Savage Land, I thought did a really good job. Lake Mungo. Horror in the, he uh, Horror in the High Desert, which came out this year. Uh, I enjoyed that one. Where, again, it's... It's technically... A, it's kind of put in a found footage format, but it's more like a fake documentary. It's kind of its own genre now, in a way, where it's not ending where everybody dies and, you know, either there's people being interviewed and it's made to look like a real, like, documentary, like a program you would see back in the days of... Unsolved mysteries, that type of thing. In this case, it's it's done in those in that way of there's this mystery happening, and in a way, for me, it's the best of both worlds. Because if you watch something like that on ABC, NBC, where they talk about this mystery and what's going on here, I say it's the best of both worlds because you could be intrigued by the mystery, but in the back of your head, you know that no one really got harmed. Because a lot of those real life mysteries can be very intriguing, but in the back of your head, it's like, yeah, but someone still has disappeared or gone or dead. And I almost feel bad for being intrigued by it, but at the same time, you know, it's natural human behavior being intrigued by something we don't know and want to solve either ourselves or want to know the answers to. But here, you could be intrigued by the mystery, but again, no actual people are harmed so again that's what I mean it's the best of both worlds and I thought the story in this was interesting and went into directions I didn't think it would the acting was believable a pair of documentary filmmakers two of them they had to see this guy named Dwight Nixon who I thought he did a good job Dwight Nixon really is one of the stars of the film he's the guy we of the three, the guy, one guy's behind the camera the whole time. The girl, she does fine. She's not annoying or irritating or anything of the sort. Neither is the guy. And Dwight Nixon, he's looking for his wife. His wife has been missing. Went missing on this specific property. At one point, he was a suspect. And he's like, no, I didn't do it. I want to find what happened to her. And does it have something to do with this property? And the unraveling of the mystery, I thought, was rather fascinating. And it's a good looking... In portraying to be a documentary, I thought it was handled well. There's some really good aerial drone shots. Nothing done was really that weird or off the beaten path that I went, What the fuck? I did, I just see... And this was on Tubi TV for free. So for those who have Tubi. I did. I think if you like Lake Mungo. Or Horror in the High Desert. The Tunnel. I did. I enjoy those. And I recommend those. For those who are into that. I don't, I don't know how many people are. But I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. In a way. Uh, a different type of documentary. But the one on the Loch Ness. With Werner Herzog. I didn't mind that one either, but 
Dwight Dwight Nixon pretty much talks about how him and his wife would go treasure hunting. They went treasure hunting on this farmland. Her phone was found, but then she disappeared. And he's like, where the hell could she have gone? And then you start learning more and more, and I don't know how much I want to give away. Because I do think it's a mystery that was very interesting, very interesting. And like I said, went into something specific that, on one hand, made me go, yeah, this is fake. This is not real. This is fake. But I still appreciate because I'm like, oh, that's actually a, a neat idea. Which reminded me of a story, so, uh, if I mention it, it would give it away. So I would say this, if you, like I said, if you like films, if you liked Horror in the High Desert, Savage Land, Lake Mungo, Lake Mungo The Tunnel, it's uh, worth it. It's for free on Tubi. If it's not your cup of tea, oh well. But again, I'm, I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. So again, spoilers starting now. It was cool to see how this mystery unraveled and made me go, what the hell's going on? What's going to happen next? Where the same land has a amount of missing person cases. In 1994, this little girl went missing. In 1977 around, a boy was abandoned by his family no one knows what happened to his family the girl the father of the little girl that went missing in 1994 around 2004 he went back and in the same spot she went missing there was a pond there and in the pond he found his little girl's ribbon that looks like it hasn't aged a day I said, wait a minute, she went missing in this area. It was like 10 years later, and now this little ribbon, what's going on? And it seemed like it was getting a little bit complicated, but I didn't get what they were going for. And it just made it a bit interesting. Um, it does leave a couple things in the air by the end. But I guess kind of like a real documentary that would happen as well. I'm, I'm going to give the bit spoiler. Have you ever seen Fly of the Navigator? Do you remember the plot of that movie? Where a kid was taken. And a certain amount of years later he came back and he didn't age a day. It's like, is this... You kind of find out it's almost this human time travel thing. And someone breaks it down like the 10 year theory. That. 10 years this person went missing. So perhaps the girl in 1994 came back in 2004. But when she came back in the same spot there was a pond there. And she, so she drowned. Or. This one girl who disappeared and then 10 years later she was brought back by saying like she didn't age a day. I, again, this, just the way it unfolded, it, it I thought it was a rather intriguing setup for such a far out there idea. Because I thought it, it wasn't too slow. It wasn't too fast. It had the right amount of pacing to sl to get us into this situation where, again, the, the look into these disappearances and this one girl that was found, but wait a minute, was she in this area? And the sort of the twists and turns of... 
Maybe it's this one guy named Wayne. Maybe that's not it. It's this one guy named Wayne. Maybe he, uh, he did something. Because the one time he abducted, abducted someone. This one girl that came back. Is she this person's daughter? Actually, she no, she's this other person's daughter. I, I, I'm making it sound more confusing than it is. It's it's a hard movie for me to explain in words, but at the same time, it's not as confusing as I'm making it out to be. Like, this is bit where they hire divers to go into this pond. And you find the skeletal remains of the little girl who disappeared in 1994. And that's one of the clues, like, wait a minute. This skeleton, like the age, would be the age she was in 1994. The you know the how tall seemed very similar, but then you know she wasn't here in 95, 96, 97, and then this pond came in later. Like what? It definitely is. Like I said, I thought the mystery was rather intriguing as they're trying to piece this all together. And this is going to sound more confusing, so bear with me. This one girl who disappeared and then popped back up and she doesn't know who her parents are. And... Her name is, uh, I think, Glennis. She popped back up. She doesn't know who her parents are. It seems like these other people will be their parents. Because she goes to a place, it's like, I kind of recognize that, but I don't recognize this. And then come to find out that wasn't the actual daughter because they go into this abandoned house and they find like a little girl's bones in this hidden passageway. So you get the idea that that family, their daughter disappeared. And in the 10 years when the one guy Wayne boarded up the place, that little girl came back and was stuck there and couldn't get out. That's what I mean. There, there's certain ideas that you think about. Ooh, like, oh, shit. Like, just certain little ideas that I put into your brain. You go, wow, that's kind of like a little creep factor to it. I just, But it's not... It's hard to even call this horror. I think calling it horror would be misleading people. It's not horror, it's not monsters, it's not people being attacked, it's not suspense. It's a documentary mystery type of thing. It's not... So in a way that makes it a bit different compared to like the tunnel, Savage Land, Lake Mungo, where ultimately they're... Maybe Lake Mungo more in common. Since there's not really a... Like a fort, like that was like oh something's going to attack the family. That was more kind of learning the truth about what happened to a family member. Same thing with here. So I would say of the films I mentioned, Lake Mungo is a more better comparison. And like I said, by the end of it. This idea, the idea throw, uh, being floated around that maybe it's this 10 year theory thing and that this land is cursed in a way. But then it leaves questions. Dwight Nixon's wife, and even says, Well, if I don't find her, I know I'll be here 10 years later. Just in case. But you had the little girl dead body that they found in the house. Not the one found in the water, but the one found in the house. That's the real Glennis. Uh, I think Howard. And they said, well, what about this other Glennis? Well, where did she come from? Like the, the older lady they talked to who was found as a kid. What's really happened with her and her actual parents? Or the one guy from 1977, the boy that was abandoned by his family. What happened to them in 1987? Would they, 
And they do bring this up. Like, wait a minute, what in 1987 this boy's parents come back? Uh, I think the guy's name is Daniel Lopez. I think it's also to make you go, if you don't want to buy into the t human time travel theory, maybe there's other elements, but I wouldn't even know really what ele other elements it would be, because it seems like you know, within the story, that in a weird way, that's the more sensible answer compared to like what else could it be? Again, I would say there's a idea why it left some answers unanswered, but like the girl that they thought was Glennis, but is not the real Glennis. In this case, Glennis Williams. What's more about her story? Like, where did she actually come from? She was found as a little girl. Which family did she actually belong to? Because she. she and I guess the Wayne guy who for a bit they thought he was kidnapping people and actually by the end he's in jail does that mean he's going to stay in jail does that mean he's going to be there forever even though now there's doubt whether he did it or not um, did they technically help put an innocent guy in jail by delving into this mystery uh, idea why but I, I think there's a few more answers they could have... Because at the end, it is a movie. It is a movie. I think there's still a few answers they could have... Answered. To be fair. But... Uh, did I would say the ending is like... Huh. Not that I felt it was bad. It's like... Hmm. Okay, again, they're going more for realistically than movie and I get that I get that choice but I guess because in my frame of mind I'm like I, I still know this is a movie I still know this is fate so I'd rather you go a bit more towards that direction but uh I did I thought it the for what it was trying to do I thought they did a rather good job making it believable enough to perhaps fool a couple people and I thought the story was an interesting I thought the acting was perfectly fine and uh, I it, it pulled me in to see what would happen next and so the uh, idea I would put the others above this the tunnel savage land horror in the high desert even a uh, population zero which is not a horror film either but that was a film that tried to be a fake documentary that's another one I like population zero uh, that's not horror at all. It's more of a drama, but it's done like a fake documentary, and as well as mystery. While this has a potential sci-fi twist to it, but yeah, overall I liked it. I, I did enjoy it, and I'm not sure what else to say, because I probably confuse people with my explanation. But I guess for free on Tubi TV. I say, yeah, if you like that kind of fake documentary stuff where it's not everybody dies at the end, all that shit, it's, I think it's worth a, at least one look. I do. It's short. I thought I went at a quick pace. I had some intriguing ideas. And was uh, fairly well polished for a director video director streaming movie. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.